Alcock's dogged commitment to astronomy earned him an MBE. And later, on his death, Peterborough Cathedral took the rare step of dedicating a plaque to him. His work set the benchmark for serious amateurs who were struggling to make discoveries in the face of professional, government-funded research centres, like the radio observatory at Jodrell Bank near Manchester. Expensive technology allowed space researchers to probe deeper and deeper into space, an area out of reach for the amateur. But Alcock's work proved that back garden observers still had a role to play. Without the modern amateur astronomer, the professionals would be, they'd be able to do their major work, but what they wouldn't be able to do is what you might call constantly survey the skies for comets, for double stars, for variable stars, for things of that sort. Quite simply, because most professional outfits actually have funding for very specific high-profile projects. Let's say the gas clouds in, the, in, in, in nebulae and things of that sort, or, or work done by Hubble. They don't have funding for the routine monitoring of the heavens. And for this, frankly, they need people who don't need paying. So I think the sort of amateurs really come into their own in a way because of that. But uh, if professionals are having to wait several years to get telescope time in Tenerife or Chile or wherever, the great thing about the amateur is you just walk outside the back door and observe without waiting the two years because if it's something new in the sky it may be too late to wait that time. For example, it is one example. There are things called supernovae, exploding stars in very distant galaxies millions of light years away. We want to find these things early because it's very important to catch them in the early stages and amateurs have a very fine record here to discover these by the dozen. They look round and professionals can't do that. <laughs> Tom Bowles is president of the British Astronomical Association and a leading figure in supernovae work. My real passion is supernova and, and I think it's the sheer scale of supernova that really attracts me. Explosions are huge, they're ginormous explosions, their distances are great, we're looking at distances of a hundred million light years away and I can see them from my back garden and that's terrific. This first image here is the master image of the galaxy. On this side, we can see the same galaxy retaken just recently, and you'll see that there's a, a new star appeared just at the fringe of the galaxy, and that is a new supernova. The amateur's contribution has proved so useful, it's marked a turning point in their history. With their profile raised, they've been able to develop a special relationship with professional astronomers. We had an example in the Beagle program where there was amateur information which was very valuable to us, although unfortunately we could do nothing about it. When we were heading towards Mars, we were heading towards Mars when we were hoping to arrive at what was called the end of the dust storm season. Well, amateurs have watched the dust on Mars for years. In fact, uh, we were told on December the 22nd the dust storm season is lasting longer this year than it had any time in the 400 years of records that we have since the telescope was invented. So they were watching a record. You know, most professionals don't watch things like that anymore. They're looking further afield. Beagle 2 captured the public's imagination in the same way other events like Halley's Comet and the recent solar eclipse did. But not all space stories which excite readers and journalists are so benign. Amateur astronomer Peter Birtwistle helps track asteroids that might hit the Earth. He's one of hundreds of worldwide nighttime observers collecting data on the trajectory of near-Earth objects. Effectively, uh, if a near-Earth object comes by, we try and follow it so that we can predict where it's going to go in the future and try and predict whether it will potentially hit the Earth. And so far, so good. There was an occasion um, a year and a half ago where there was an asteroid um, and the initial prediction uh, was that it could hit the Earth um, the next day. It was, it was about, I think it was 30 hours time. Um, and you, you know, go to work and you, know, you have a good night observing last night. Well, 
yes, <laughs> um, but there's an asteroid that might hit us tomorrow. You know, it's um, some very strange uh, thoughts. You know, you, it, you just resign yourself to trying to find out whether anybody's observed it and whether they can refine the prediction. Um, but, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You're very philosophical. <laughs> you, you can only be like that, really. You can't uh, worry too much about it. Peter, like most amateur astronomers, has two jobs. A software architect by day, he's out in his fiberglass observatory at night, whatever the weather.